waiting for on Twitch to acknowledge things so that way I can click through to the actual chat and see what is going on over there and it looks as though we are live hello everyone uh happy monday i hope that everyone's doing well today at the start of the week uh i am vince and welcome to the stream of consciousness um you might know me by you know the name at the top of the screen dichotomous prime but if you don't uh i am a west indian canadian uh by gentleman who goes with he and him pronouns um i do a lot of work in the tabletop sphere doing cultural consultation, sensitivity reading, and narrative and mechanics design, but I'm also a huge fan of video games and the design there, which is why I've put something like this together. Um, I have been streaming Mondays and Fridays, kind of, sort of, on and off, you know, hey, the world is wild with COVID and everything. Um, but I like to check out a lot of the time smaller games, and one of the ones that I have been checking out recently is this lovely one that you're seeing in front of you, Hard Space Shipbreaker. Um, as a notice ahead of time, uh, a CW for there are some bloom effects and some lighting effects in this game uh, that if you do have photosensitive epilepsy or any other kind of photosensitive uh, disorder or disability that it may cause you harm, please take care of yourself first. Um, I've adjusted the various different settings accordingly to try and mitigate some of that, but if it is going to be a problem, I promise that there will be other streams with other games where it will be less so. So um, please, it might be best to tune into one of those, but if not, welcome and hello to everyone who is coming in at the beginning of this week. Um, you may notice that part of the title is covered up. I can um, move this for a brief moment in case you're wondering, hey, look, what kind of game am I tuning in for? Um, one thing I have been noticing in this game is that the UI is a little bit all over the place. Um, so I have generally figured out that keeping my camera at this sort of area where you see it right now is probably the place to keep it to cover up the least amount of UI that I can. Um, but yeah, uh, Currently, this is a game that is early in early access on Steam. Um, if you haven't seen it before, it's kind of a cool, you know, as Tim Curry might say, you know, late capitalism in space, um, where you play a shipbreaker who is basically a salvage worker. Uh, you are given the hull and just generally ships that are derelict or have been retired in some way, shape, or form. Uh, and then you use the various different tools at your disposal to dissect the ships, recover any kind of valuable cargo, and um, send whatever kind of valuable materials or whatnot to various different areas, and you are trying to work down the quite literally billion dollar debt uh, that you start the game with. Um, and thus far, it's been a pretty fun little game. Um, it's essentially a zero-G puzzle game uh, that is very heavily physics-based. Um, but yeah, so far, uh, I've been having a really good time with it. Um, but before we get to that, while, while folks are still just kind of filtering into the chat, um, I did want to go over something that I was thinking about for the last few days. Um, ooh, double sound? Okay, uh, let me take a look, because I believe... Let's see, video capture device... Uh, <laughs> now, what happens... I am going to try and mute my audio capture. Does that fix the double sound that you're hearing there, Matt Calder? Because I have a built-in mic to my webcam, and I'm not entirely sure. I thought that I set it so that um, there... Okay, sounds better. Good to know. Um, 
I thought that I set it so that uh, the, let's see, video capture device. And let's try and set it to there. Um, okay, and this is my video capture right here. Okay, awesome. Um, so there's a built-in mic here. Usually I try and set it so that there is, um, you know, only one source because I also have my handy dandy uh, blue snowball mic right here next to me. Uh, but, you know, sometimes OBS, oh, it just came back. All right. Okay. Yeah, hip. Check, check, one, two, three. That's all right now. Well, I suppose this is, it wouldn't be a stream if it wasn't for uh, tech hag type stuff. Um, so hopefully that's working out. Okay, keeping everything the same. Awesome, hands off the audio stuff now. Um, yeah, so I've got my handy dandy C920 webcam here and my snowball right next to me. So I try and set those so that I only have one audio thing at a time uh but yeah it's it's a little bit tough sometimes not gonna lie uh but luckily we got that figured out before we really start getting into things um but yeah before we started getting into the stream i did have uh, a couple of different things that were on my mind in terms of game design type things um so if for those of you who follow me on Twitter or for those of you who don't, um, there has been a couple of things going around recently uh, about quantifying emotions in mechanics, essentially. Well, hello there, Sophia. Thank you very much for joining us. I know it's pr probably pretty late where you are. And for however long you're around or before you head off to bed, I'm glad, as always, to have your company here. Um, so... Essentially, um, there's been kind of a debate amongst a few indie D&D &D designers about various different, um, specifically it originally started up with, uh, let me just see if I can actually, uh, there was one designer uh, named Anthony Joyce who suggested that love, all types, not just romantic, should be a mechanic in D&D. Oh my goodness. Allergy season. Love it. Um, it can, uh, it's a real thing that greatly impacts people. It can make them more brave, fierce, and willing to fight for those they love. I imagine some boost if you were fighting with or near someone you love. Um, and the response to that from, uh, if you follow Oliver, I guess it's Oliver Darkshire now, which, hey, amazing last name, uh, but very outspoken, um, gay D&D designer, um, in the DMs Guild, uh, essentially kind of took it to task in being like, um, this feels weird, it feels very robotic, you know, beep beep, my love for you is now seven points higher and gives me a plus one attack bonus. And there was just generally some back and forth about that that got pretty heated. Um, and I had some thoughts about it, um, but ultimately kind of to start off contextualizing that is that I hate to break it to especially the indie tabletop creators who tend to do stuff like, you know, no dice, no masters systems or um, journaling type systems, uh, belonging outside belonging or a couple of different design aesthetics in the tabletop space. Um, quantifying emotions with mechanics is kind of what we do um, in game design full stop. Um, now, you can have a very broad definition of what qualifies as a mechanic. Um, a journal can qualify as a mechanic. Any kind of framing device or narrative that structures your interaction in the narrative in a way that has specific rules. All of these are mechanics. Um, and depending on the genre of the game that you're playing, the intended scope or play gameplay loop that you're intending to do, um, they can have a number of different emotions that you are hoping to evoke. Um, those who have seen my various different tabletop chop shop threads um, 
have seen me evoke the phrase, uh, the emotion is the goal. Nothing else matters if you forget that the reason why you're designing something is to evoke a certain emotional experience. Um, and so the idea of emotions and mechanics working side by side in and of itself is not that odd to me. Um, it seems quite natural. I think that where the friction lies here is more in the specifics of the fact that Dungeons and Dragons is a war game. Um, there's a lot in the branding and marketing that says otherwise, and a lot of very creative game masters and indie creators have, uh, whether through clever homebrews or supplements, uh, added things to it. But by and large, um, if you look at any of the source books, which is the metric of how we evaluate what a game is about, ultimately, um, most of the rules have to do with combat and resolving through violence or even things that don't resolve through violence, avoiding violence. Um, the framing is always or most always with respect to that. There are three checks in the game, intimidation, persuasion, and deception. Um, and beyond that, that's essentially it for the mechanics and the rest of it you just make up. And I think that the conflict here seems to be that placing the influence of love and the strength of relationships within the structure of Dungeons and Dragons rules um, is placing that whole thing within the structure of a war game and with respect to a game that largely resolves its problems through violence. Uh, hey there, AJ. Nice to see you today. Hope that you're doing all right. Hope that you're resting. I know you are one of the hardest per working people in my sphere, but goddamn, brother, just like relax a little bit. Hopefully we're going to get some of that uh, chill vibes in there for you tonight. But uh, good to see you. Glad to have you on the stream. Um, but anyways, to, to not overly belabor the point that I was getting to, um, I think the, the problem here is more, again, like trying to pretend that a system that is by and large about violence and then the original post by anthony joyce is like love should make people fight harder um is incredibly myopic in terms of how you talk about how love influences people um if you even think about you know to be very topical um super giant games game hades uh it's a roguelike it's a roguelike where you spend 90% of the game killing things and getting killed. It is also a game that has a lot of very involved relationships with the various different characters. And there are keepsakes, uh, but they don't get stronger as your relationship to the character gets stronger. They get stronger just through fighting and your relationship to characters gets stronger through your relationships to them. Um, and just kind of those two things are delineated in a, in a way that doesn't detract from either aspect. Um, but it doesn't try to pretend, you know, like, oh, look, your friendship pr plus one, you do more damage and all that sort of stuff. Um, and so you'll, if... Uh, People should definitely follow uh, Brandon Leon Gambetta, which uh, I apologize, Brandon, if I'm mispronouncing your name, um, who does a lot of design in the sphere of romance and relationships um, and has a lot of really interesting things to say about how those dynamics interact. Um, and it can be very powerful and very significant, um, but to have the discussion about emotions and love and relationships and the first approach to that being, let's put it into this thing, my love makes me stab harder, is like, I can understand why people who, including myself, who already have a number of different kind of criticisms about D&D uh, &D, are looking at that and going like, mm, I don't know if that's really a thing. Um, 
But I digress. I, I think that ultimately, if I'm going to have a point from this, it's more that you shouldn't dis like hmm, words, words coming from the brain, forming, eventually making their way to the mouth. Game design is the weird alchemy by which we take numbers and evoke word and evoke emotions with them. Um, and numbers or mechanics, essentially. Uh, and I don't think that that's a bad thing. I think that breaking it down to you can't possibly do that sort of undercuts what game design is as a whole placing it within this um, contained, controlled structure by which we can experience emotions at our leisure that are removed from our real-life experience. Um, and I think that to reduce it down to emotions and mechanics are, are weird. One's like robot stuff, and the other thing is what like hearts and like meat people feel. Um kind of robs us of the ability to have a deeper conversation about uh, the contexts in which both of those elements take place. Um, and I think ultimately those are the conversations that will make us more informed consumers and better game designers as a whole. Um, but yeah, that's my thought on it. And I've been talking for about three minutes straight, so I'm going to take a quick hydration here, which everyone at home, hydrate, sit up straight, posture check, take your meds, get some food, get some water, everyone's taking care of themselves, and yeah, I'm, I'm very curious if there are folks in the chat who have uh, similar or differing thoughts on the whole thing, um, but yeah, no, I'm very interested in what y'all think. some good agua all right so i'm gonna pop into the game here uh as i mentioned before the ui is kind of all over the place um so i've basically determined that the position that my webcam is in right now is the position that hides the least essential parts but there will be a couple of things that are hidden i can see them okay um if this is your first time tuning in, that's the debt at the top part of the screen that I started the game with. So this is very much being a sad poor in the future. Um, okay, so what do I have here? My equipment, how's my durability looking? Hmm, excuse me, durability's okay. All right, so I have some equipment here. Um, so let's see, what I'm gonna do since I started off on like the wee baby ships the first time that I actually did this, um, I'm gonna kind of, I'm not gonna jump right to the really, really huge ones, uh, but I got some more tools. Let's see, what do I have? Uh, the Royal Brewster, sure, let's do that. Okay. This will be interesting because I've, I've been dealing with like big boy ships this whole time. And I like a lot about this game so far. Not gonna lie. Alright, and break! Perfect. Let's see what our work order looks like. Power cell, storage, nanocarbon, metal, cargo hatch, computer terminal, power junction box. Okay, so pretty standard. Uh, let's see, where, get my scanner on, where's my airlock? There's my airlock. And just for a quick sort of orientation, uh, there are three different places that I can send components of the ship. Uh, valuable and complex pieces, things like furniture, cargo, computer terminals, things like that go down here to this barge. Um, salvage like raw materials like metal go to the um, furnace, which I'm looking at right now, and more complex components like nanocarbon go into the processor, which is right here. Uh, if I cross those yellow lines, I can also get sucked into those things where I will die. I will immediately be cloned and revive at the cost of like 500,000 credits. Uh, all right. 
Uh, oh my goodness, the frame rate is dropping already? Okay, well, let's just see about adjusting that, because we had that problem last time. Because we're going to go video full screen, we're going to go, how about windowed mode? And we're going to see if that adjusts things a little bit. Just going to take a look at the stream here and wait for it to actually tell me whether or not that worked. Because I think that other than hopefully... Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Oh, did the game just freeze? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> of course. Of course the game froze. All right, well, we're just going to have to start that back up again, aren't we? All right, that is hilarious. All right, good start. Good start, team. It's all good. Let me just do, 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 do. That's done and dead, so let me go back in. All right, good start, good start. So we did it in Windows mode last week, or windowed mode last week, but I thought maybe um, windowed full screen might work this time. Uh, but not so much, not so much, not gonna lie. Um, so hopefully, let's see if this gets us a little bit the face cam is also dropping frames yeah there were, um there is definitely some issues with that oh oh okay so the stream looks like it's coming back a little bit soda stream really that was that's a word that it picked up okay um all right so I'm just going to take a look on here, wait for it to catch up to going to the title screen. All right. So we've restarted the game. And we're going to see if... Can I... Confirm. Drain disabled career now I'm wondering if I'm going to have to actually play it from the OBS screen because that was also a weird thing like it would let me do that without frame drops but it wouldn't let me or at least that's how I did it the entire stream last time um, so let's see here uh, do, 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 do. So we're going to science this. We are going to try and go through and see if that works. Because right now I'm on the loading screen. And there doesn't appear to be any kind of drops right now. So I'm going to try and play it from the window itself. Nope. Oh, interesting. That sucks all right cool so i guess we're playing it from obs directly well it's a good thing that i know where all of the stuff is uh so we're just gonna go to our ships my goodness it is like like y'all were saying it is um it's not a stream if there isn't tech issues right uh okay so let's give this another shot all right so as I was saying three different places that I can send salvage the furnace the processor and way down below me is the barge where the green arrows are and my overlay will tell me what goes where um, a couple of things before I go in you'll notice that they have chosen to decide to make the overlay yellow which is cool if I'm looking over here. Now, look what happens when I look at the ship. It's kinda, it's kinda hard to see because 
not only that, but that's also where the subtitles are for any kind of instruction that the game has is right down there at the bottom of my screen. Um, so it's not super ideal, I'm not gonna lie. Um, all right, let's go in through here. And things look to be okay on the stream for everybody. I'm taking a look at here right now. And let's go to the airlock so that I don't die from explosive decompression. And... Cycle through the airlock. All right, what do we got? What do we got? Oh, the reactor is right here. Cool, 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 cool. That's not nerve wracking. Um, all right, so. We need to toggle the pressurization on here. So let me boop. Air pressure level okay. Stream looks good. Okay, Ajay, thank you very much for the follow up. All right, what else do we got in here? And actually here, let's look at my work order, see what I need to salvage. Power cell, storage, Nano car. Okay, so it looks like it largely kept it the same. That's good. Uh, and everything else appears to just be pressurized here. Ooh, we have a data drive. So this is another one of these games that does the majority of its world building through uh, data. Hello there, quiet drone. How are you doing on this Monday? Thanks for dropping in. We're just playing a little bit of Hard Space Shipbreaker. Which, um, I guess is the, uh, let me boop as in let me poop. Awesome. Yep. We, we love ourselves a good poop joke here at the stream of consciousness. Uh, let's see. So where do I want to start? I've already depressurized the main cabin. The man, I gotta, um, repair my scanner sometime soon. Cause you can see as the durability goes down, I'm starting to get these little squiggles on my screen. Um, but yeah, so let me just get out my stinger and what do I want to get first? Storage, nanocarbon, cargo hatch. Okay, so there are computer terminals over here. So I think what I'm going to try and do is cut the floor out first, if I can. Uh, you'll notice on most of these yellow bits I can cut through. This has a cut guard on it. I need to break that before I can cut it. Um, but a lot of these pieces, like that can explode. Any kind of electronics can explode and arc to other pieces. Um, I'm doing great. Just got done doing speed run attempts and accidentally did a thing and explosive decompression tore a ship in half. Yeah, that'll happen. That will absolutely happen. Um, all right, so let's... that and we're gonna all right awesome two cuts in and i haven't blown anything up aces so do that and we're gonna try and just straight up thrust into these See, actually here, let me use my grapple. So your other tool is just pretty much exactly what you think right now. So let me just grab this real quick. I need to detach this cryo cell because this goes to the barge, boop. And this goes up here to the processor. And let me just try and not rocket myself into space. Perfect. So yes, physics applies in this game. So if I try and use that push on something that is too heavy, it won't push it, it will push me uh, because Newton's laws 100% apply. Uh, that also, you can see I've tried to reel in this forklift, um, same thing. Uh, if I try, uh, actually, let's see what the, how much I can push this. 
Okay, I think this should be okay. Um, as I try and... Yeah, the, the cut guards, because they don't really tell you. Like, I just thought that it was indestructible and started to work my way around it. Uh, but then I went on to Reddit and they're like, oh yeah, no, you just can grab like a piece of the ship and break the cut guard with it. And I'm like, okay, I just didn't want to blow anything up by accident. Um, okay, speaking of blowing things up by accident, I think that we're going to go over to the airlock and decompress that so that we just don't have to worry about that and we can kind of clear that off our to-do list. Oh, hey, uh, Gift Nova, thank you very much for joining us. How are you doing on this happy Monday? Hopefully it's a happy Monday for you. Um, let's see. So, let's see, do, 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 until someone did something. Isn't that the way? It's like, okay, well, like, um, I don't know if you've seen the, the VOD for last week, but, uh, in the tutorial, it's like, oh, yeah, just, uh, pull out the reactor, just give her a good old pull, and then there's, like, a pause, and so I pulled it out. And after the pause, it's like, oh yeah, by the way, when you pull it out, it'll start breaking down. And I'm like, excuse me, what? And it's like, you did that on purpose. You sabotaged me. You suck. Um, but, you know, I got over it and, you know, there's enough about this game that I really like that I was like, okay, cool. And then I just went and I cleared another, like, 40 hours of playing it. So, you know, clearly wasn't that bad. Uh, do, do, do. I'm okay. Way too long sh sleep left me all mushy and achy, but aside from that, things are going all right. Are you on that alternating three hours of sleep and, like, 16 hours of sleep thing that I'm doing? Because, oh, oh boy, that, that sucks. And I would very much like to have a normal circadian rhythm for once. But, you know, luxury problems, right? And we're just going to try and boop this down to the salvage and that should be okay okay and now because I've been dealing with the big gecko ships I haven't actually had to do a manual flush for a little while or at least I haven't had the option to do a manual flush for a while uh, so we're gonna go so there are engines on the outside of the ship. Again, for those unfamiliar with the game, I can see that with my scanner here. Um, and if I don't flush these before I cut these off, then the fuel lines will most likely rupture and it will explode. Um, so it's very important to do something like this. And you're going to do that over here. You know, it's it's not as flashy when you do it correctly. <laughs> so it's kind of hard. It's like, oh, you turned the switch. It's like, yeah, if I didn't turn the switch, uh, this is actually a separate component that I can pull out um, and put down into the barge for salvage. And if I don't flip that switch, uh, there is fuel in these fuel lines, which I can see with my scanner here. Uh, that will actually rupture and explode and set me on fire and all kinds of not ideal scenarios. Do I actually need to harvest the thruster? I don't need to harvest the thruster. Interesting. It's been a while since I've had a ship that I didn't have to harvest the thruster on. Is this Okay, this is storage, so I do need this. And there we go. How many of those do I need? Three. Okay, that's not bad. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, another storage bin. So one thing, hopefully, like, because hopefully I've gotten more efficient at this, hopefully before the end of the stream, I'll be able to show you one of the bigger ships that I've been working on. And one of the small qualms that I have about this game, how the objectives of the work orders are placed, is it asked me for collecting computer terminals. It asked me to collect 22 computer terminals. And you can't do them grouped or anything. You just have to pick each of them off of the ship individually and shoot it down there individually. 
and it's so time consuming that it just felt super super tedious um and i don't have like a group gravity pull or anything it's just i have to do it one at a time and it gets really 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 boring um let's see uh i do need the junction box okay uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move back here away from anything electronic because as you'll see, once I pull this off the wall, it will arc to other computer terminals and such. Sick. Got the junction box. I'm going to, what? No, no. You, are you serious? Uh, all right. Well, we're screwed. All right. Uh, that seriously? Well, that's cool. That's super cool. Uh, we're just gonna, we're just gonna go over here, and we're gonna watch this reactor blow up, cause um, that's gonna happen, just momentarily. Yep. Yeah, and I did. Just, I can pretty much just get, like, yeah. There's the meltdown and. And let's see how big the explosion is. Yeah, it's pretty big. Yeah. Uh, I did not uh, think that it would be that close to arc to it. Um, yeah. That's a thing. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, big boom, big bada boom. Uh, so, because what I don't want to do is spend the entire stream in this really inconvenient debris field, because if you look at this scanner, all of these are objects that are actually like things in the world that I can move around, which is cool, except now I have to move all of this. Um, yeah, big oops, big, big oops. Um, so what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to start a new ship. Um, cut into the outer hull. It just went kaboomy. Yeah, it's, uh, put the reactor in the wall. Yeah, I had that happen too, because it was just like, why is this placed here? This seems so silly, but it's randomly generated. So of course it would be there. Um, not like it would make one side of the ship super heavy or something, right? Um, let me... I don't think I actually need to repair anything. Cool. And ship catalog. And boop. And what actually has more stuff on it? Sure, whatever. Um, but yeah. So that's what happens when a reactor goes critical. Uh, I haven't had the reactor on the big ships go critical yet, uh, but I imagine that it's uh, pretty much entirely game over. So this is one of the big boy ships that I have been uh, looking at. So I've got my scanner, structural, we got two airlocks. If a piece of debris just slightly too big bounces off the hull, it's just doomed. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's tricky because a lot of this game's ethos and a part of this game's, uh, it, like, a lot of this game's ethos I dig, uh, because of, um, let's see, okay, so can I, is that just straight up open now? Oh, cool. Can I open the other one, too, and just make this super quick? Uh, actually, you know what? We're going to boop. Because here, actually here, what I'll do is I'll show y'all how big the reactor is in this ship. Because, all right, so we got... This is just basically, like, the equivalent of a 747. Um, where's my... Why is this shut down already? Thank you. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, that's about what I figured. Uh, their quiet drone is if it shuts down, it's uh, it's pretty much done. Um, all right. So, putting up my scanner. That's the size of a reactor in the big boy ships. Um, I need a utility key, and apparently there's no other way to really do it if to get the thrusters off or anything like that without spending money on a utility key, or at least I am not skilled enough to do it. Um, but yeah, so let's see. We're going to go through, and I'm just going to take a look around to see if there's any kind of like data packs or anything that I can collect before I start cutting into this beast. So that's that's the airlock though. So Wait, that's that's depressurized? Okay. Um All right then. Yeah, the the ship being already vented. That's uh that's a new one on me too. So, that one's... So, this airlock is still pressurized. This one is not. It's interesting. They've The ships have started spawning with, like, depressurized sorts of areas. But, okay. So, the comms area is fine. The cockpit is still pressurized. It's... It's definitely a thing. It's definitely uh, different than what I would expect. Um, so I need to just double check to make sure that there isn't anything yet danger. So I am going to stand well to the side while this vents, because I'm going to show you what's going to happen. And if there wasn't anything tied down in that room, it can absolutely fly through the air, smash me in the face and like just smash my helmet and I begin suffocating. Um, oh, hey, look, data pack. Do, 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 do. So, um, the majority of the stuff that you collect, or the majority of the money you get for salvage, excuse me, will go towards paying down your debt. Most of the money that you get to upgrade your equipment and repair it and things like that come from collectibles. Uh, come here. No, you're you're gonna do the like dog with the stick thing and not fit through the door. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So this is the interior hull of the ship. Yeah, Z and X help you grab onto the walls. Yep, absolutely. I am also, I am also a pleb using a controller, uh, but I did notice that. Um, and on the controller, it's uh, I think I want to say like left trigger, left bumper. And, you know, oxygen drain is turned off, so I don't actually need that. Um, so, this is the interior of the ship, just where all the passengers and people are. This is the actual technical, like, guts of the ship here. And you can see it has a whole superstructure that I can cut through. Okay, what's being all dramatic with the music? We don't need to be we don't need to be extra. It's gonna it's gonna freak me out here in a sec. Because anytime like I need to be super wary if something electrical starts to arc to something else because we saw what happened last time. Um, okay, so we're gonna just start using my saw here. Just start cutting through these various parts and just kind of peel this ship like an onion. Do, do, do. And we just go boop, boop, boop. And boop. And is that okay? That's peeled away. I also like just the chill music in this game. It's just this nice, very... I've heard it likened to Firefly by two different people. Um, it is very kind of... Um, I think a lot about Alien 
uh, like the original Ridley Scott, like, 1970-whatever alien, uh, in the sense of just, like, oh, you're in space. Oh, am I an astronaut? Oh, no. You're... It's, like, space truckers. It's just, like, you are the manual labor, except you are just, like in a vacuum at any given time so it's just extra dangerous am i getting paid more Pfft, god no um okay so once i start getting a couple of these pieces decoupled they should actually actually let me check my work order do i need a i do need nacelles all right so um these folks right over here I can decouple as well and those are valuable however I need to um, go down and there's a f there's actually is that a fuse I don't actually know no it's just a fuel pipe okay but if I try and vent it now getting paid less because you're the blue-collar worker yep yep that um well, actually, I, I suppose if I was the service worker, I'd be the one getting paid less because blue collar workers in a lot of these places are actually, at least in, in our time, are getting pr pl paid pretty well. You know, plumbers, that sort of thing. Do, do, do. Well, I'm, and I'm also quite literally replaceable via cloning. So, you know, hooray, future. Um, all right. All right, so as you can see on my scanner, one of these has already started to come off, which is good. Uh, all right, let me just figure out. Yep, and I can move it. So really big pieces like this. Um, uh, if I try and push this with my, with my grapple, let me see if I can just sneak out here. It will, it will not push it. I will get pushed because that's how Newton's laws work, unfortunately. Um, or fortunately, I actually really like the physics modeling in this game. Um, but for heavier pieces, I have these, which are called tethers. And if this works the way that I hope, yep, that can anchor really big pieces and pull them where they need to go. Yeah, yeah, it gives me... That was what I was thinking too, Nova, uh, is big Subnautica vibes um, in that you don't have to make a lot of stuff up in order for both the ocean and space to be equal parts beautiful and horrifying. Um, like, Subnautica is scarier than nine-tenths of horror games that I have ever played. And now I can see down into the cabin, so that should be fully depressurized. The only problems I should have are like, say, that reactor room down there. Uh, so I just need to be careful of that. Um, all right. Uh, okay, so that panel's been pulled in. Actually, let me see, because my grapple is a little bit stronger because I've upgraded it. Let me see if I can because there's some cool things like physics tricks that are actually true to life in terms of how you model physics that I might be able to trick the engine into letting me pull stuff heavier than I should be able to. Uh, can I try pushing it like a li little bit? Just a little bit? Yep, yeah, okay, all right, that works, that works. We can do that. Also, this is one of those games where like, I won't get disoriented, but I will do the thing of, like, tilting my head as I tilt the controller to try and, like, reorient myself. Uh, is that a cargo hatch? Uh, nope, that's just a nanocarbon panel. All right. It's not even intentionally horror, it's just the inherently scary nature of the deep sea that makes it so scary, terrifying. So, uh, fun film geek fact for those of you who don't know it. Uh, when Alien, the original Alien, was pitched by uh, Ridley Scott, um, the logline of it was Jaws in Space. Um, because it's this idea of, like, 
Okay, so you Jaws was this whole thing where like you were trapped on a boat and you had this thing swimming around and there was no escape. And kind of the same dynamic that was used in Jaws was then kind of pitched to the studio heads in the original Alien as that same dynamic with the Xenomorph. Um, let's see. Okay. So I don't think I have anything attached to that. I should be able to pull it. And I think once I move this a little bit, I think I might actually have to use a tether for that. Ooh, I need to cut that off though. All right, interesting. All right, so we're gonna do we're gonna do our first pre pre precision. Let's hope hope that I am more precise with my saw than I am with my words. Uh, precision cut of this ship, because if you notice on my scanner, this panel is made of aluminum and has to go to the furnace. This panel is made of nanocarbon and has to go to the processor. So what do we do about this, uh, guys, gals, and non-binary pals? Well, we take our lateral saw here, and I try and line it up as perfectly as I can, hopefully not getting sucked into the processor in the process. And let's see how precise I can get this. Beauty. All right, and we're gonna go boop. And now that that chunk is off, now I have a little shaved off part at the top here, but I personally, I don't have that precision to be able to cut through that the first time. Um, like I can maybe do something like this and kind of do a bit of a hack cleanup job. Uh, let me just move over a little bit. And there's that. And, but this like little slice is gonna be so small that I don't really know if it's gonna be worth a whole hell of a whole lot. Um, but we can try. Skadoosh, there we go. Oh yeah, no, didn't want to try it out. Yeah, I very much, uh, at the same time that I learned that the uh, the physics engine is very precise. Look at that, that's a beautiful cut. I'm proud of that. Um, at the same time that I learned um, at the same time that I learned that the physics engine does take into account the Newton's laws, I learned that, uh, the processor can kill you. Um, all right. Okay. Stop. Stop with your shenanigans. Get in the processor. Get. There you go. Uh, so yeah, the various mass of the different panels does affect how much your grapple can move, which is funny because I've upgraded my grapple um, to be able to move more, but I'm not sure whether that just means that it will jettison me to my death faster. Uh, so I haven't been overly bold in using it a whole lot. Uh, we're gonna get a utility key, which is expensive as balls, but I need it so that I don't actually blow myself up. Um, okay. Let's see, so I've got the airlocks already put out. Spinning debris can kill you quite dead. Oh yeah, no, uh, there's that whole like Whoa! animation that your character does when something big uh, gets really close. Um, which, to be honest, I kind of wish they would just stick to like putting a big red exclamation mark on your HUD or something because having me moving something with my tether interrupted by my on-screen avatar going Ugh! is really irritating uh, because it just, it interrupts gameplay. I'm not a super big fan of how they've decided to model that, I suppose. Um, but hopefully as the game development progresses, they kind of figure out something maybe a little bit more precise uh, to use insofar as player feedback. Uh, because absolutely, 
you need an alert to let you know if something is large enough that it will mm. smash you flat like a beer can on a frat boy's forehead. Uh, but, uh, let's see, and it's unpressurized. That is pressurized. Okay, yeah, so I'm just going to stand over here and hopefully nothing hits me in the face. Uh, boop. Yep. There you go. Okay, I'm on. There you are. And we're just going to use this utility key uh, to vent fuel from thrusters. Failure to comply may result in umbrae leaks. If anyone knows what that actually stands for, please let me know. Uh, all I know is that it's very bad if it happens. Uh, because, uh, yeah, basically it will blow up the thruster and anything that is flammable next to it and will cause a chain reaction that is very, very bad. Um, okay, so what do I need to salvage next? I'm going to do these uh, nacelles, nacelles, I don't actually know how to pronounce that. Um, now that presumably the fuel should be vented from them. Hypothetically. Because, yeah, I can't interact with that, which means that the fuel should be vented from there. So now I just need to use my handy dandy stinger to do that and do that. Now that's decoupled. There should be another one down here. There it is going to decouple that. Made up term for the spaceship things. Yeah, I, it seems so weird though that that would be the word they decided to make up, if you know what I mean, because there aren't really a whole lot of sci-fi-y type terms in this game. Uh, all right, so one tether for you. Uh, another, once I stop moving, another tether for you, stop rotating, and that's two out of three harvested. I'm going to try to not get, no, oh, well, you're just going to cancel out, aren't you? Yep. Is there enough, do, 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 inertia to get down there? I think there is. Yeah, that should be enough. Okay, cool. Uh, I also get super nervous with how close this side of the ship is to the incinerator, and I'm super worried about the, like, this is a big stress off my mind because when I decouple these, I'm super afraid that they're just gonna float in over here and get destroyed. And there goes, like, my, there goes my fight money, as Balrog would say. Um, and boop. And boop. Now let's see. We're going to try and science this. I'm not going to use a charged push because that might just be like me impacting into the side of a ship. And I don't want that to happen. But I will try and use a regular push and we're going to see what happens. Okay. Okay, regular push works. That works. Okay. How about charge push? Charge push works. All right. Good to know. So that's three out of four of those taken care of. Instantly tether the ship forward. Yeah. No, I have done a bunch of panic tethering more than once. Not going to lie. Um, okay. So we now have the thrusters. I've got the nacelles. Nanocarbon are just the panels. And I need two of the thrusters. And the fuel's already been vented. So we're going to go out here. And let me just clear my work order because there's enough shit on the screen. And we're going to cut through these couplings which should pull this cap off and then y'all will see that I can manually extract the actual thruster out of the ship. And 
Oh, no, no, over here. You behave. Behave. And look at that. Beauty. All right. Now we're going to very carefully reel this towards us and damage it the least amount possible. So that is the thruster engine. That is what I need to harvest. Harvest, I say, like it's a sur- Well, I guess it is kind of a surgical procedure now that I think of it. Uh, but, all right, so I'm gonna angle this so that I don't push it into the actual ship and boop. And there we go. All right. And one more of these, and that part of the work order should be done. And the, the trick with this stuff, so one thing I hope that the devs change as the game develop, uh, rocket surgery. You know, that's honestly, if the, the marketing writes itself, to be 100% honest, is if yet, no, you'd stay here. There you go. Um, yeah, the marketing writes itself, to be 100% honest. Um, if there isn't, like, someone writing a Steam Curator review or something with that attached to it, missed opportunity. Major missed opportunity. All right, I floated that out from the ship, and... There's your, okay, so I'm very curious. Does anyone else get like kind of Bob Ross vibes from this? Just kind of the like, all right, now we're just gonna go over to our little friend, the thruster over here, and we're just gonna take our stinger and just gonna have a little bit of a pallet over here, and we're just gonna boop these right here and remove these couplings. And we're gonna send our friend, the thruster, down to his friend, uh, because nobody likes to be lonely and just kind of like you know it's very kind of systematic puzzle dissection type game and I am a very big fan of like you know honestly any game that isn't like Call of Duty shoot a man um, but especially ones that try to do kind of something inventive like this and really focus all of the mechanics around ah, 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 ah. okay you you stay i know inertia is a thing but you know you be cool and boom and you're not going to collide with anything are you no okay you're good all right um yeah no it's just it's it's real chill it's just kind of, you do this. Because the only thing is, it takes a while to do these big ships. Like, kind of the reason why I didn't want to do it at the top of the stream is that I did want to kind of do the smaller ones first. Because this is, I can kill, like, three hours on one of these. Um, and the thing is, is, like, I can't quit out of the game and come back. It'll be just like, nope, if you quit out of the game without completing the ship and come back you can't choose to go back in and continue with that ship even though you can like end your shift go and rest and then come back and continue a ship you can't do that otherwise um and that feels that feels frustrating because i'll be like 90 percent of the way through dissecting a ship and be like okay it's time for bed i need to get up early in the morning i'm gonna cut out of this and it's not as if um oh yeah see that freak out animation i really don't like it uh come on come back here hey 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 i said come back here i said hey hey Um, yeah, it's kind of, it sucks to get 90% of the way through a puzzle, really, and then just be like, yeah, no, you got to start a new puzzle, because that one, yeah, when you quit out, it just, like, it's gone now, it's just gone, you can't do it, um, but yeah, no, it's, uh, 
it might seem like kind of a small quibble, but it's... I don't like that particular way that they've decided to model that. Now, it's it's in it's a game in early access, so if it gets feedback, I don't see that necessarily being a feature that anyone is super, super committed to keeping. Uh, but at the same time, I'm like, uh, please, please just let me continue the thing I was working on. Because, like, I, I have ADHD, and completing projects is very, very satisfying to me, because it is very hard for me to do. Um, so just kind of having to stop and start a new one, it kind of sucks. It kind of robs some of the satisfaction of systematically working through something. Um, I've been able to quit out completely and able to come back. That's interesting, Quiet Drone. I don't know if I have to have another update or something, but whenever I... Well, was there something bad that happened? No, I don't think so. Um, oh, my fuel's low. That's why. Um, but what'll happen is I can quit out, come back, and then when I go to start my shift, it will have that, like, continue salvage option blanked out, and I have to pick a new ship. So, yeah, that is uh, that is different from the experience that I have had with the game thus far. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll see if there's an update that I don't have yet. Um, but I only really booted up the game for the first time last Monday or so. Uh, so, I mean, it's always possible that I've missed an update or something, but um, I don't know for sure, really. Um, let's see. Uh, is this detached? It is detached. Perfect. All right. So what we're going to do. Come here. Come here. Which I apologize for the sniffles, everyone, by the way. It is, it's just allergy season in Canada. We are, uh, coping with it as best as it can. Um, however poorly or successfully that may be come on tether move this down a little bit because i think i'm going to be able to push this once it actually gets out of the ship because i don't want to damage anything is it overlapping anything still uh kind of a little bit okay let me just move up here no come on stay still break there we go. Now we're just gonna... In addition to reeling things in, I kinda wish there was a rotate function uh, for big pieces like this or trying to move cargo through doorways. Um, which, you know, part of that might just be trying to like physics your way around the various different problems, but uh, that would... Yeah, how dare I have allergies, it's true. People get mad at streamers for weird stuff, Sophia. Eating on stream, drinking on stream, breathing too loudly. Um, yeah, okay, I'm far away from it. Don't even give me the, uh, like, that's fine. Um, let's see. Hope it passes soon. It'll probably be here until first frost, unfortunately. That's just kind of... Uh, my cross to bear, it seems. Ooh, this panel is just straight up separate. Okay, uh, we can do that with the lateral saw. Let me just get my scanner out. Measure twice and cut once, as they say. There we are. And boop. Oh, wait. Yeah! Rim shot. Look at that. Let's see. I push something while I have it grapple. That too. Um, just kind of, I, as a general, I guess, complaint piece of feedback, I guess, um, for the upgrades. I hope for more upgrades that are additional abilities to interact with different things rather than just like, your grapple can move five more pounds. Your grapple can move ten more pounds, etc., etc. This is totally going to go into the incinerator, isn't it? Nope. You you stay here. Come here. Come here. I have more tether. I 
I think we're good. I think we're good. Cool. And just boop. And we're going to boop it one more time. Boop. Because the saw sound is really satisfying. So I find, uh, Quiet Drone, that it is cut 17 times because I'm trying to remove the fucking airlock and the walls are, like, staying connected to the ship even though they are, according to my scanner, literally separate objects now for no good goddamn reason. Uh, that is usually what happens to me. Um, uh, and that's for the furnace, isn't it? Yep. That's a hatch, so that's for the furnace. Um, goddamn airlocks. There's some people on the subreddit who are wizards at this sort of stuff, and I don't know how they do it. Uh, let me check something, because I cannot... For some reason, Twitter... Has anyone been seeing whether or not it is showing... Or not Twitter, but Twitch. Um, not really able to see how many folks are joining us on the stream in chat tonight. Um, it's just kind of the number is not there. It's not a super big deal, not knowing either way, but, um, I just noticed this is the first time that I've had that happen, so that is very interesting. Yeah, high-level speedruns. I could not... This is... Speedruns stress me out. Like, I... I dig just kind of having like i don't have my oxygen on i've never had a drain on um for my oxygen because i just like having all of the time in the world to just sit here and puzzle out how best to do things and all that sort of stuff okay so how are we gonna do this uh we can do Excellent. I'm getting better, better at that, though. Cutting along the actual, like, guy wires here. I'm getting way better at that than I used to be. I used to be an absolute mess. There we go. Ten. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, I, I got an add-on because Twitter follower stuff and, like, drama associated with being... I don't know, just generally saying stuff that I feel like needs saying sometimes is stressing me the hell out. Um, so basically, I got an app that hides Twitter followers, Twitter following, likes, everything like that, uh, so that I just don't have to look at it. Um, and I was wondering, I don't really know that there would be a genuine reason why that would affect Twitch, but yeah, no. Be... It's the first time that I've noticed that, but yeah, it's all good. Oh, you you're you are on the Hades rush. I am I'm super happy that folks are getting to play that game. I have been playing it in early access for a good while now, um, and I'm a big fan. It's a very very good game. I've um, the only super giant game that I haven't super gotten into, uh, pun not intended. Uh, is Pyre just and that's like nothing against Pyre it's probably a fine game it's just the the core gameplay loop just doesn't grab me uh, I love Bastion I love Transistor I love Hades uh, it's just like the whole sort of like oh look it's soccer but emotionally significant and I'm like I'm sorry I'm not European I don't think that I understand what like being emotionally attracted to or emotionally invested in football feels like um and let me just nope that's not the tool that i wanted come okay, here pyre was a weird game and yeah i i respect weird i have big respect for weird i a big part of kind of my philosophy is i respect a company that will try new things and have it work like moderately well a lot more than you know hey look it's the 56th halo clone and have it be done like eh, okay um so i that's why i say that i don't 
I don't dis dis it. I don't have any disrespect for Pyre. It just kind of came out and I was like, this is very clearly not going to be the game that I'm going to spend a whole bunch of time in. But I have replayed Bastion an endless number of times. Uh, it is... It has heavily influenced how I want to... How I GM tabletop games when I'm doing... Um, emotionally powerful moments and uh other things of that nature um let's see i've done the thrusters what else do i need to get out of here uh the reactor that's going to be last probably uh data drive yeah because i need to be able to take this out so um just as a glimpse of how complicated this gets uh, this is the coolant kind of moderator for the reactor itself the moment that I take this panel, let me just pull this panel off for a moment. Yeah, okay, go over there. Um, these canisters of coolant, once I take all of these out, there will start a meltdown timer for the reactor. During that time, I need to take it and get it to the barge before it melts down. So I need to get from here, navigate over to here, cut the reactor out of the frame that holds it and port it down to the barge during that meltdown timer. You know how I talk about how this game is zen as hell but also stressful as hell? That's the stressful as hell part. Um, so yeah. Let's see. Oh, hello there, Nine. How are you doing on this Monday? Good to see you. Glad to have you at the stream. Hope everything's going well for you. We are just slowly working through, cutting through this big beast here. Uh, computer terminal. I need a whole bunch of those data drive. Is there another data drive down there that I didn't grab? I think I might have to check my scanner. Uh, that's objects. What are you? There is a data drive. Okay, cool. I just need to go back down there and get it. Uh, da, 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 da. all of 22 fuel yeah the thing is uh and it's an interesting design choice um and when i say interesting a lot of the time i'm critical of it but i actually don't mind it in this is that technically you can buy as much stuff as you want but it just adds to your debt uh so i can go and i can buy more fuel and it's not going to be a problem it's just it's going to add to that like 990 million dollar debt that i had before um, uh, where are you? Wait, the data pack, it's, wait, is it in the airlock? No, it's in here. Okay, cool. So we have our data pack here. We're going to collect that. So if you'll also notice, um, so a thing that I hope they change with the HUD in this screen, there's a lot of information that is very, very small. So I'm going to indicate with my fingers directly below where my head is. Uh, you can look at the various, excuse me, different tools that I have and the very, very tiny little numbers attached to it. You can see how much durability it has left. Uh, now you can also tell just because my tool begins to smoke and spark as the durability goes down. But again, for individuals um, who would like some visual accessibility for things um it's not super great um i would like for them to change that hud that to make it a little bit more visible um if i had my way uh if i got a chance to speak with devs about it honestly um because there's a lot of information um that has to be kind of communicated to players like um right at the center of my screen where I have my reticule. It'll tell me what I have it on there and how heavy it is, uh, which has implications for how much weight I can move with my grapple tether. However, again, you can see the number that actually says how heavy the object is that I'm touching right there is super small um, to where you might almost consider it like information that you could forego like it could be just flavoring and stuff like that but it's not um and yeah no it's um 
it's it's weird to just kind of be quibbling over a little thing. Uh, okay, it's time to go outside with the little ones. Good luck on your day. Thank you very much for joining us, Quiet Drone. I hope that uh, when I decide to stream this again, you'll come and hang out. And I hope that you and your little ones have a lovely Monday evening. Or Monday time zone, wherever you are. Um, in any case, uh, have a lovely time. Uh, okay, let's see here. So we have the airlock over there. I can repre or I can depressurize that from the outside. That's fine. Um, so we're basically down to the kind of major components of metal and nanocarbon here. So I'm just going to start stripping away the outside of the ship and sending it to where it needs to go. Uh, that's kind of cool. The light's now filtering in now that the uh, nacelle is gone from there. Uh, all right, so I got my stinger. And we're just going to boop this away. And we're just going to move along the inside hull of this here ship. Just a boopin' as we please. And there goes part of it. And luckily the thrusters are gone, so that that part doesn't fall onto them and cause them to rupture. Because I've had that happen, and it's not super fun. Uh, okay, so... The small text is inferior, right? It's, and you know, I have now quoted Human Houseplant a number of different times on this stream, but criticism is an act of love. I love a lot about this game. I admire a lot about how it is designed and what it is trying to do. And so when, I, when I'm critical of aspects like that, I, I hope that if and when I decide to contact devs about my feelings regarding it, it is taken in the spirit in which is, it is intended, which is, hey, I really like your game, and I hope that it will succeed to the best of its ability. Here are a couple of my thoughts about some things that I think might improve the experience um, and improve the accessibility of this game. And a couple of those things are just little things like the chosen colors for the HUD, the size of the text, uh, the general location of everything. Like, like I've said, there isn't really a spot on the stream that I can think to put my camera that won't cover up something and not only like something generally, but something actually pretty important. Um, Okay. Um, and that's like, you know, if I put my camera on the right hand side, it covers up my tool. Um, and I need, this is a very precision based game and I need to notice where it is pointing very specifically, especially for when I use the lateral saw, like I can do a lot of different things if I just place it just so. Um, so if I put it on the right hand side, it covers that up. Uh, I need a place to put the captions uh, for those deaf and hard of hearing individuals who want to tune in. Um, and that pretty much covers up the main spot where I would maybe put my camera. Um, but I also need kind of like my overall, like the timer and the number of credits I have at the top. The tethers at the top left hand corner are a valuable resource that I need to know how many I have. So I can't cover those up. Um, and just, it's very scattered. Um, and I'm not a hundred percent sure what the design rationale was for positioning those in the way that they've designed, they've decided to. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. So, uh, this is another electrical component that I need to be very careful about. Um, because that's another thing that if it takes damage... So, um, this is a cool way that they figured out the display. This is basically the health bar, those two rows of squares that are there. After the damage goes past that first yellow square, the red squares are when it will start breaking down and cause it to arc or damage things around it. Um, 
I really like that as a choice, personally, because it is very minimalistic, and it tells you, like, okay, so this is how much leeway and how fragile this piece of equipment is compared to everything else, and gives you that information. Like, if I, like, I'll go over to a chair later on or something, and it'll be, like, all yellow squares. Um, so I know, okay, if I bust the fuck out of this chair, it's probably going to be fine. Um, let's see. Do you look at the stream screen or the game screen? Um, I am currently playing the game from OBS right now, Sophia, because when I try to zoom away from OBS to play it via the game screen, regardless of whether or not it is windowed or not, the frame rate for all y'all goes to shit. And I have yet to figure out a way for it to not go to shit. Um, so hopefully sometime in the future, it I can figure something out with that. I'm going to take the risk on pushing this. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. We're going to do a charge push. Yeah, there we go. There we are. Are you also detached from the ship now? I think you are, because you're not super flush lined up. Oh, that's the wrong uh, scanner setting. You're not super flush with the chassis anymore, so I think that you're separate. All right. Yeah, it's, uh, it's challenging. I might, like, it's kind of my primary reason for wanting to set up a set. Like, I'm quite literally watching the stream on a laptop next to my desktop uh, so that I can take a look at the actual, like, oh, how much? Eh, I've got a little bit of durability left. I'll just refuel my thrusters here um, to see whether or not the, um, the frame rate goes down. Um, so I have a super um, low-tech... Um, amateurish kind of setup and we're still kind of puzzling our way through that um and hopefully as i continue to figure out the solutions to those problems i can make things a little bit smoother of an experience for everyone watching uh, i think i should be able to tether this beautiful now i think my tether should last long enough. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. I might have to attach a second one to it. Because, yeah, if you notice, this piece, uh, I think the indicator seems to be that if I can tether something and the entire thing turns blue, it's large enough for me to be able to push it myself without using a tether. Uh, but if I can't, it's usually an indicator that I will get pushed back or it's just not strong enough to be able to do that. Um, but, you know, it's kind of guess and check. Uh, it's kind of that whole, you know, we're sciencing it, uh, which to a certain degree I definitely respect in terms of how uh, the developers have decided to approach that aspect of the game. Um, okay, I think I can take this panel off. Uh, yep, I sure can. So we're just going to send this guy over to the processor. If I can line it up, because I don't want it to bash into another part of the ship. Hey, hey, Yahtzee! Look at that, perfect. All right. So, there are cut guards on both of these pieces. That is challenging, so I might actually have to remove the airlock first, um, which, as I indicated earlier, can actually be quite challenging. Um, let's see here. So, I think this is a separate panel. Yeah, I think that's a separate panel, so I should, hypothetically, be able to take that off. I just have to decouple it first. 
So how's everybody doing in chat? How's everybody just kind of hanging out? If you feel like, if you're just lurking, please don't feel pressured like you have to talk. That's totally cool. We can all just kind of hang out and get have a, a good chill space time. But uh, yeah, I hope everyone's doing okay. Uh, it's so satisfying. Yeah, right? It is very, very kind of like, you know, peeling the plastic off of your new electronics type satisfying, which is something that I am 100% here for. Um, okay, so this piece here, I don't believe is actually attached to the cockpit. So I need to science this. Yep, you know what? I think I can tether that. I think I can tether that. So let's just give it a shot here, team. We're just gonna go, to actually take this out first. Oh, it's two panels. Okay, so there's the little one at the bottom here. Oh, that didn't actually get dragged in. Well, that kind of sucks. All right, well, let's see if I can correct that once that kind of comes back down. I swear the, the inverse of that satisfying feeling of having the parts come off is the frustration of a part stopping moving directly outside of the gravitational pull zone here. So we're just gonna try and tether this one more time and hopefully that should be enough. And hopefully they don't interfere with one another. There we go. Okay, I think we should be good. Munching on some almond slivers and watching One Piece. I have had numerous people who I know really enjoy One Piece. I I can't do it, but more power to those folks who can. But then also folks who know me know that I'm a bit of an anime grump. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Like, I like anime, but I'm also very picky about it. Um, let's see, that's attached, but it's not, hmm, interesting. Yeah, I might actually have to just slice through this whole thing. That could be challenging, so we're gonna see how well I can pull this off. This is what we're gonna call a pro gamer move. Uh, oh wait. The program remove would be depressurizing this first so that I don't rocket myself into space. There we are. Okay. All right. So we're just going to pull out our handy dandy scanner here as soon as I. Okay. So this is actually. So, um, Sophia, I know that you went to school for game design, so this might be interesting to you. These panels, uh, I'm going to, if you can see how they line up here, they are actually, there's a corner panel here, there's a central panel, and there's another corner panel, and that's how those are represented in the game. So if I try and use my lateral saw, sometimes you can actually see with the dots, it will indicate how far across it will actually cut. So my challenge here is to try and line it up so that it cuts all the way across in one slice. Now, and it's a whole bunch of like moving a single inch a bunch of times. All right, fingers crossed. Okay, okay, not bad, not bad, okay. So, as you can see, it cut through that, but it didn't actually cut through this part. So now, I need to line this up. Again, we're gonna measure twice, cut once, rotate myself a little bit. And I think that should be good, just need to because I also don't want it to like angle up halfway through it. It's just 
tiny, tiny little adjustments, it can either be super satisfying or super frustrating. Sin was actually hanging out with me the other night while I played this, and it was a bunch of me just kind of like grumbling occasionally uh, at some of the stuff. Uh, let's see. Uh, picky how. Um, there are some tropes in stuff that will just straight up take me out of an anime series. Um, as an example, um, though I'm less strict about it now, um, when I used to watch uh, uh, da, 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 Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, um, I, for the most part, really enjoyed that. Uh, but what would happen is that there's an, a trope in anime a lot of the time where they'll be like having a really serious moment and then a character will make a joke and then the animation style will change and they will be like really kind of like chibi and cartoony and like over exaggerated in their response uh and that's a very anime trope so i don't want to like hate on it it's like you know uh you hate like uh philip dick but you hate stories about a guy looking for himself looking for something that turns out to be himself it's like okay cool then don't read philip k dick whatever um but what would happen is i would be getting really into this cool story about like you know the ethics of war and like playing god with science and like you know all of this very heavy themes and then someone would make a joke about edward elric being short and then that would happen and i would just be like okay i've been completely emotionally divested from this show um and not be able to enjoy it um let's see so can i pull i think i should be able to pull that now nope see one of these little panels over at the corner here is still attached i think yeah yeah okay so it was just angled just slightly wrong. Uh, okay, let's try that. There we are. Okay. All right, all right. So, ta-da! All right. Um, so yeah, that's something to where I'm just kind of like, I like shows that don't, use that a whole lot um so i was a big fan of cowboy bebop i was a big fan of um what's the show um psycho pass was another one or at least the first season i was a big fan of that um all right i'm gonna have to tether that in i think uh boop and just kind of yeah there was a lot of different shows that like I'm not gonna it, it sucks it would be crappy of me to get mad at anime for being anime so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time kind of you know I don't want to hate on it but at the same time I was just kind of like all right this is a common enough occurring artistic feature that I just don't think that I'm going to maybe get as much enjoyment out of this as I would another genre if you know what I mean uh can I Come on, line up. Mm, this is another time when the lighting in this game is kind of making it hard for me to do that. Oh, hey, cool. Nanocarbon work order has been completed. Uh, all right. So, come on. Give me the corner piece. And... Can I... Oh, I had it for a quick sec, and then I lost it. Had it and then lost it. Come on. Oh, inertia, my forever enemy in this game. All right. Uh, can I do that? Let me just go down a little bit and. So it's just so many tiny, minute adjustments. Just a little bit, little bit. There you go. Okay. And we're going to move over slightly. And this should be enough of a cut to get me through. Uh, 
Ah, there's still the corner over there. God damn it. All right, fine. I might actually have to cut it pretty high. Mm, I'm going to lose a bunch of material, though. That sucks. Ah, all right, fine. I'll just cut it on an angle. And there's still the corner left. God damn it. Okay. One more time. One more time. Hit. Hit. Okay. I think this might be too heavy for me to push. But... If I can tether it, it's gonna be super satisfying. So, fingers crossed. Ha ha, look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Ah, oh, that makes me happy. That makes me happy. That's like the ideal scenario in this game. Oh, that's good. That feels feels good, man. Feels good, man. JPEG. Um, okay, cool. So that's the airlock, or at least one of them taken care of. How much metal do I have left to? All right. Oh, hey, Timo B. Good to see you on this Monday. Uh, Monday's been all right. Actually got a good night's sleep last night. The allergies are, um, are a going, but, you know, it's September, so unfortunately that's just a, a cross that I have to bear. Um, how are you? I hope that your Monday's doing all right. Thank you for uh, dropping in here. We're just playing a little bit more on our shipbreaker. And... Gonna cut this very close to the coolant tank. Awesome. Is there another one here? There's not. Uh, do, do, do. Oh, almost missed this. Let's see. Uh, I like the on and off comedy and serious stuff, but I guess that could take someone out of it. And it's it's interesting, Nova, because it's very contextual. Like, you know, the folks who don't know me from Twitter probably don't know I am a big fan of My Hero Academia. Um, and they very much pull that particular narrative technique a bunch. Um, I also like, uh, I like One Punch Man a bunch, but I found that and this is more with One Punch Man than it is with My Hero Academia, but I like when it is used intentionally and when it is an acknowledged kind of fixture of a particular narrative trope. Um, like when with One Punch Man, it is very much meant to kind of emphasize like, oh, look, here's this like really silly kind of like limp-wristed kind of silly looking superhero who doesn't look like a whole lot and then when Saitama gets serious it's like oh crap that's that animation style is specifically used uh to emphasize that point and so when it is used intentionally in that sort of way um I I have a lot more kind of leeway for it I just as a if it's in a show and it's just kind of a generalized fixture, um, then I'm like, eh, okay, this feels inconsistent. Uh, because I don't have a problem with a show varying back and forth between uh, comedic and serious elements. I very much am someone who feels that narrative requires ebb and flow. Um, it's more the specific trope that kind of irks me uh, because it won't, it doesn't feel like, it feels jarring, I guess is the the way that I would use to describe that. Oh, that panel's ready to come off. I can probably deal with that right now. Boop, and tether. And there it goes. I'm just gonna get out of the way. Um, but yeah, 
So I've I've become a little bit less critical of it, but like say for instance, um, uh, Orion Black, uh, who also streams, and who knows, I'll have to see if they're streaming tonight. I'm not entirely sure, uh, but uh, I'm over on their Discord, um, and they and a bunch of people recommended a a Crunchyroll original anime called God of High School. Uh, and it had a lot of like really cool looking animation and some kind of cool fights in it. So I decided to check it out and they, a lot of folks really, really love it, but I just like, I thought it looked really cool. I thought the fight scenes were really cool, but I was just not emotionally invested at all. Um, and maybe it'll take a few more episodes for that to happen. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I was just kind of like what's the missing component here and i wonder if part of it is just there is a particular style that people are attached to either because they grew up with it or like this that or the other thing um to where like if you aren't someone who grew up with it it's it's more noticeable than if you did um for instance um I don't even want to necessarily be so uh, callous as to dismiss it as nostalgia. Um, but um, I'm kind of the same way with like Legend of Zelda, for instance. Like I didn't play Legend of Zelda when I was growing up. Uh, it just, I was always a few console generations behind, so I never really got to play it. Um, and so... I will look at it and I will go, okay, as somewhat of a historian and as someone who enjoys seeing the process of how games have evolved, um, I think that it's interesting in that sense, but I have yet to be able to play a Zelda game and enjoy myself playing a game. Uh, the closest that I came to it was probably Breath of the Wild. Um, but even then, I was like, oh, there's probably some aluminum attached to that. Oh, well, I'll get over it. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was kind of hard for me to, like, invest myself in it. You look like you're coming off of the ship, or is it the front panel? I think it's the front panel. Yeah, it's the front panel. All right. So we're going to try and tether this. Uh, one tether is going to go there, and I might need another one, because this is a big old piece right here. Yeah, yeah, fuel levels are low, I know. And my durability on my saw is pretty low, too. So, this is what we're going to call a pro gamer move, because I need to get this coolant out of here but there was too small a space for me to kind of drag it out before this piece was detached. So I'm gonna drag that out. I'm gonna send it down to the barge before this gets pulled into the processor because that shit is valuable and I wanna actually salvage it. Um, but now that is being moved over. I'm like, it's, it's that thing where from an academic level, I can appreciate the craft of Zelda and how it set a lot of precedent for games that came afterwards. You know, Zelda crawled so that other, or whatever, Zelda walked so that other games could run, that sort of thing. And I can totally see that. It's just, I can, I have played other games that refined the formula that Zelda set out. And so when I then look at Zelda, I'm like, oh, it's the unpolished version of this other game that I played. Um, and that's like, that's no shade to the people who developed it. Um, it's just like, you know, if you were gonna like mock an Olympic athlete from 1917, uh, like, oh, that guy could only run this fast. I've seen people from like, 2015 who ran way faster and it's like well yeah because there's a whole like discipline of nutrition and training and technology that 
occurred after this person ran. They're still a remarkable athlete who did a remarkable thing. It's just there is a context to that and to appreciate what they did, you kind of have to acknowledge that. Um, I'm going to try very hard to not cut into this. Um, all right. <laughs> There's do do do. Okay. And we're going to be very careful. We're going to try and cut. Actually, you know, it would probably be way easier if I actually cut this off first, like I did, you know, with the other side of the ship. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I got that uh, silly dumb cook energy. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. And come on, a little bit back, a little bit further. Ooh, I got most of it. We got most of it. All right. Just need to line it up. Did I get through the whole thing? Mm, nope, I still got one panel left. Damn it. All right. Ow. And is that here? Yep, it's right here. Okay. So. We're going to do that. Is this actually coming off now? I think it's coming off. Nope, I was incorrect. All right, cool. Oh, I actually need to cut this off too. I didn't even notice that. All right. I think my durability on my split saw is starting to get pretty low. So I am gonna try, slice this off just so and then I might end this shift and go in to repair some of my stuff beautiful boom it's interesting because there's this tiny tiny little like plate of like two pixel wide material that's here now um which is funny and there's no real like i could cut it again but like it would be worth like three dollars so it's like why would i even do it um okay and this is this is a hundred percent part of the plate that's attached to this isn't it well i guess that answers the question of why i would do it then uh boop and we're gonna rotate come on give me that give me that sweet sweet right angle Ugh, there we go did it actually do it i don't think it actually did it damn it all right can i move it Nope, I cannot. It's still attached to something. Ah, I'm aware fuel levels are critical. Thank you. Thank you for noticing. Thank you, computer wife. Are you serious? What are you still attached to? You're still attached to the girder? Really? This is what this we're gonna do this. This is this is how we're gonna do this. Alright. Okay. Fine. 
You have wasted my time and chat's time. Be gone, thought! There we go. I banish you. Here we are. All right. Is that still... Yeah, that's all aluminum. That's just the inside chassis of the ship. Um, okay. So, I've cut through that. Might have to just straight up slice this off of the, the interior girder here. And come on. Give me that sweet, sweet angle. Oh, oh, something's floating off. Ooh, I got the whole panel. Sick. All right, awesome. That makes me happy. All right. Oh, did you not actually go in? Really? All right, cool. Fine, I guess. Um... Yeah, and now I'm out of tethers. Cool, 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 tight, 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 tight. Um, all right, I have like no fuel and no tethers, so I'm just gonna float this in, hopefully, and then I'll end the shit, the shift to words, and repair my stuff. Uh, all right. Move. Please move faster. Please move faster. I know you are very large. Please move faster. Alright, I'm gonna try and do an inertia trick and see if it works. We're gonna... Huzzah! Alright, cool. Awesome. So, that is going in there. And I have exactly two units of fuel left. So I am going to head up here. Because when you run out of fuel, you can also reel yourself in with your grapple, which is pretty cool. Um, and we... Boom. So, as, as students, I, I want you to be able to see this to reflect on how angry it's going to make you. Because this is a feel that I think all of us feel. Um... Look at how many credits that I've earned there from all of the pieces that I have submitted. And like, eh, a couple of pieces are destroyed, whatever. No big deal. Cost of doing business. Mm. So, a little bit over three and a half million credits. We're going to complete the shift. We go to the next morning. Hey, look at all those fees that I get to pay to rent all of my equipment and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, so that's super duper cool, including the, uh, oh yeah, an interest. Awesome. That's super amazing. A uh, little bit too close to home. Kind of calling out uh, reality here, uh, Focus Entertainment. But uh, let's see here. So we're going to decode some of this information and see what we find. And these are from the uh, the data packs that I pulled off the ship. Um, so let's see. Uh, tiny text. Um, Charles, it's me, Tom. I've read over the paper. And this is actually hard for me to read sitting in front of the screen right now. So, you know, rip eyes. Uh, I saw the pictures too. She's beautiful. She really is. Eve with her little cleft. Mm, that's ableist and weird. Um... I uh, thought a lot about what this can mean, how it is important to you. I know I was uh, hesitant at first, but I want you to have this. I want us to have this, and you're right. We need her as much as she needs us. I thought about it, and I signed it. I've also put in for an early release from my current contract. Uh, if they deny it, which they probably will, I'll walk. Then I'm on the next shuttle back to the gate, and then on a Polaris back to you. Uh, back, so back to you and her. Does she have a name yet? If not, uh, Polaris, uh, oh, sorry, blah, blah, blah. I think we should name her after your mother. Um, you can, it's just very, very hard. Um, 
um, let's see, do 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 do. Uh, besides, what good is all the work I've been doing on the railway if I don't have any family left to ride it? And when you pick her up, I'll tell her other daddy will be there soon. Okay, that's uh, that's kind of cool. A little bit of LGBTQ representation there. A uh, little bit of a like. The way the phrasing is there is like, oh, uh, she's cute. Even her cleft lip is like, I don't, maybe the phrasing could have been a little bit better, uh, but um, I dig it. I, I, a lot of these ones are just kind of characterizing the various different um, supposed workers that you are also um, with, or not really with, but work for the same company. Um, but yeah, no, it's, um, I dig it, um, overall, we'll definitely repair some of this, 68, 83, 89, that's fine, 68, and do I actually, yeah, because I'm not up to my next ranking yet, I have cooldown, I don't really need cooldown. Uh, that's maxed out for everything. I can buy my thrusters so I don't have to pay the freaking rental fee each time. I've already got the I've already purchased the helmet. I've got fire resistance or I thought that I had I have electrical resistance and cryo resistance. Uh, let's see. Let's see do do do. I think I'm just going to buy my thrusters so I can start building up that sweet, sweet uh, extra money. Wow, my brain is actually just like losing words at this point. Oh my goodness. Um, is there anything else that I can... I don't think there's anything else I can buy with the amount of money I have right now that isn't barred by me leveling up. Uh, I'll do heat resistance in case I have to deal with explodey things uh do 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 so we'll go back uh do i want to repair this yeah sure i'll repair it okay we'll start the shift and we will continue salvage ah hope the cruelest evil of pandora's box uh oh okay looks like that panel's ready to come off All right. I'm gonna take that coolant. I'm gonna take that right here. Thank you. I'm gonna send it right down there. Boop. Yeah, there's there's really a visual accessibility problem with this game, to be 100% honest. Because um, I like all of the visually presented, like, data files and things like that, but, like, the font is like size 5 font, which is no bueno. It is not cool. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put... Oh, no, that's not what I wanted. Oh, and we're going to... Do, do, do. All right. I'm going to move... No, 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 don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. Pull it all the way in. No, not cool. Firmly grasp it. Firmly grasp. All right, fine. Uh, okay. Is this in the way? No, I should be able to bypass that pretty easily. Yep. And we're just going to rotate that. All right. And we are going to try... I'm going to burn three tethers on this. I'm salty. Oh, well. Got to get it done. All right, cool. So that's all done. We got everything at... Uh, can you imagine the existential nightmare of being an indentured servant for a company that can resurrect you? I feel like what you have just touched upon, Sophia, is the central guiding horror that is this game um like this is all kind of like 
the gameplay is very relaxing and all of this sort of stuff, but then it's also like, oh, by the way, your life is basically forfeit. Have fun! Um, so that's a thing. All right. Let's... What's the best place for me to put this? Probably where the most amount of mass is. Uh, boop. And boop. Beautiful. Okay. That's out of the way. Now. What? What is holding you on? Like, actually, what is holding you on? It's just, it, okay, you're floating there. Is it, mm, it's like two pixels wide. It's like a two pixel wide piece of metal. I'm, I'm salty. All right, fine. There, jerk. Aha! All right. And is this floating yet? Nope, that one wall over there is still stuck to the thing. All right, we'll take care of that, and then we can probably start taking care of the generator as well. Just need to not be too, too finicky about how much I cut off, because I'm going to lose part of this, unfortunately. I don't think there's a way to avoid that. Yeah, because it still broke off in two pieces. Oh, well. Rip some of my credits, I guess. Now. I was hoping for a nice little, like, cube like we got last time, but no can do. This will have to do. Come on, just over this way, just a little bit. Yeet. And then there's like a panel that's gonna get destroyed, whatever. Not that big of a deal. All right, I need to get a small object, maybe just like a little bit of shrapnel or something that I can boop these cut guards with. I might just use this ladder, actually. Can I cut that off? I can. All right, let me just, just get this tiny little segment of ladder here. Or it could just incinerate it. That That is also a possibility. Okay. So. It's gonna be a pro strat. If I can actually aim it correctly. Because what I need there's one. Come back here. No, I need my tiny piece of ladder. Nope. There it is. No, come here. Come. I still need you. So my like laser cutter saw can't cut through that, but this piece of shrapnel absolutely can just bash the shit out of it. There we are. All right, so we're going to do that. No, nope. okay, that wasn't enough. That's one. And... And this goes to the processor. Come here. Come here. It's always the big, like big spindly items that are a pain but then i mean i guess once again that's true to real life physics like if you try to like curl a barbell with one hand and curl the equivalent weight in a dumbbell with the same hand it will be harder to do the latter or sorry the former um just because of the weight distribution so i mean that tracks it's irritating but it tracks and there you go. And 
And I think that just leaves 23 computer terminals and the reactor. Okay, all right. I'm most likely not gonna get to the reactor in this stream. I might actually, let's see, do, do, do. If I, okay, if I move that out of the way, I might be able to reel this power generator in and send it right down to the barge in one swift motion. Because it's another thing that once I pull it out, it's going to, to start kind of shutting down. All right, you go over there. Actually, there are some fuses around the ship and I have incorrectly tried to remove them before. Um, so I will attempt to remove them the correct way now. Uh, I will most likely fail and be hilariously electrocuted, uh, but I will attempt. So I need to pick, so I can pick this up or I can try and remove it manually. Now, as far as I know, attempting to remove it manually futzes the whole thing up. So, nope, that's the wrong thing. Just need to orient myself. No, oh, come on. I have removed you. You now belong to me. Can I pick this up now? This is strange. Okay. So, hmm. Because when I flipped this switch before I had pulled it off, it electrocuted me. Time to find out if it's going to electrocute me again. It electrocuted me again. Cool. Ah, <sighs> cool, 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 cool. <sighs> I dislike you. Also, holy crap, that was a lot of damage. Despite the fact that I have, like, electrical resistance on my suit. Is there a way, like, I have yet to figure out the correct way that I am supposed to remove fuses because every way I try it, it shocks me. Um, okay, can I pull this out? I mean, I know that I can pull this out. I've done it before. <sighs> okay, all right. We're just going to do the manual power generator thing. All right. Screw it. Because I don't want it to get damaged, but no matter what I do when I pull it out, it gets damaged somewhat. So we're going to steady this. We're going to go... Yeah, come on. Come here. And boom. Okay. And now, if I float around the ship, there are a bunch of fuses. I don't know what the fuses are for yet. Uh, like, yeah. See, they all get blown out when I pull the power generator out. Are you still arcing? Are you good? Can I... It says it's for the furnace, so it's useless. I'm not, hmm, I don't know if that's like something that hasn't been implemented yet or what the situation is, but it's very confusing. I'm not entirely sure what those are for, but who knows? Maybe we'll find out as further updates for this game come out. And I'm just gonna grab this uh, coolant tank over here. Yeah, come on, come here, and down to the barge you go. Excellent. So, 
Uh, I've only got a couple of couplings attaching the ass end of the ship to the rest of it. So I might work through those. And then I'll probably end up doing the reactor off screen. Um, Cause yeah, that's a whole thing. And that should go away. Yep, okay. Now this panel comes off. Alrighty. But yeah, uh, so this game is... I think it's a little bit over 20 bucks right now. Um, honestly, even in early access, thus far this game has been worth the money that I spent on it. Uh, it's very, it's, like I said, it's very chill. Um, I like that the ships are randomly generated to a certain degree to where you can have a lot of replayability. Um, I don't think that's actually attached to anything. I might be able to pull that off. Uh, it is. It is, well, it is not attached to anything. Um, and yeah, I just, this is one of those things where if... If we want game devs to do more experimental things uh, other than the things that are guaranteed to sell well, um, I'm a big believer that that means like, okay, well then we kind of need to put our money where our mouths are when it comes to uh, rewarding them for doing experimental stuff. Uh, and I do think that Hard Space Shipbreaker is a game that kind of fits that same category. Um, it's quite polished for something that is not in early access. They're continually adding new things, um, and it really does seem like they're um, interested in community feedback and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I'm definitely a big fan of this. There are definitely some parts that could use a bit of polish in so far as accessibility and user interface. Um, but largely, I think there's a lot to like here, and there is, you know, there has to be a, there has to be a diamond there for it to be worth polishing, if you know what I mean. Uh, and I think that Hard Space Shipbreaker is definitely a diamond that is worth, uh, the polish, uh, that you, you want to do just to, you know, make the game the best that it could possibly be. Uh, are you caught on here? Please don't tell me you're caught on here. Please move. Please move just slightly. Thank you. Um, and there, yeah. So I'm gonna attach a second tether here. I think it's gonna immediately invalidate it. Nope, okay, cool. Oh yeah, it's it's doing a weird collision detection thing because it's in the frame behind the panel, but it's technically two separate panels. So you can see it's kind of like blinking and being weird. So oh, no, 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 no. You, no, no, you are not going into the furnace. You are not going into the furnace. You are way too valuable a big piece of cargo. Not cool. All right. started it saw it start to like veer away felt my heart go into my throat I'm like nope you are too valuable please yes please continue your descent over in this away direction Because the one thing I think will, between where I am now and getting the reactor out, I do have to do the thing that is unfortunately kind of boring and probably not super exciting to watch, which is I need to carve out the floor and then I need to collect 22 computer terminals. So basically go around and do each of these one at a time and then shoot them down to the barge. Um, 
it's a game I get super frustrated with or sink my whole life into before I because I need everything to be perfect. Neither good for me right now. Yeah, it's I almost feel like if I'm going to that is very valid because I almost feel like if I want to play this for anything less than the whole day cuz like this ship, this is a whole day project. Not going to lie. Um but if I want to do it for anything less than a full day, I pick one of the smaller ships because, like, you know, this, it's mostly this tedious, like, cleaning up the furniture and computers inside the ship that just is such a huge time sink and is also not that fun. So I kind of, like, yeah, like I said, I hope that we get a new tool uh, in future updates that lets us kind of speed that up somewhat. Um, yeah, I don't think that's attached to anything. I should be able to tether that. Um, <laughs> let's put that tether right there and right there. Bingo. Perfect. Um, yeah, because it's just kind of... I could almost, like, I could probably knock out this ship in a stream if I didn't have all of like these little finicky individual pieces of furniture that i needed to like shoot down because like okay so each of these chairs i have to pull off from the ground before i shoot this down or take this panel off and i have to do each of these individually And now I also have a whole bunch of chairs just floating around, which is also kind of a pain in the ass. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of that. And then every single one of these monitors here, like here, let me just pull one of these off to demonstrate. Um, and they can all arc and damage each other. But like, that's one. That is one computer terminal right there. And I need... 23 of them um not a super fun gameplay loop i'm not gonna lie uh so hopefully that is something that they may be oh there's another data pack i didn't even notice that and i will take that uh that's something that i hope that they refine in future versions because that's not super cool um all right oh do 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 uh Here we are. That's one panel, and we're gonna do this right over here. Just watching the time here. And a lot of the technique for removing these is cutting at junctions. And that will speed things up significantly. Come on. Yep. 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 There we go. I think that should be oriented how I want it. There we go. And I think that should be maybe one more cut over here. Should do it. Hypothetically. Hypothetically. Then, oh, are you serious? Mm, that irritates me. This tiny, li little tiny piece of metal holding it on. How about that? Want to do anything for you? There you go. All right. Okay, what's holding you on? Mm, you're attached to the other side of the room. Okay. I see what your game is. Out of here. Get out of here. Uh, it's another one of these little. Mm, fine. I can't tell you how much like the little corners irritate me. Uh, and whoosh. 
How about that? Did that fix it? What are you attached to? I'm gonna like blast myself into the ceiling trying to push this. Like I can see it on my scanner. It's detached. I have detached it. How about over this way? Is there something weird there? No? Okay. All right, let me just back myself up into the ceiling so that I don't like push myself and blast my helmet off. All right, so you're caught on something because you moved when I pushed you. All right, let me just once again back up to the ceiling. That's weird. You're attached to this other panel? Why are you still attached? No, that's not attached to the floor. Yeah, I honestly don't get why this is still acting like one object. I am not sciencey enough or computery enough to understand how these models work. Because, yep, yeah, no, that's cut clean through. That is 100% cut clean through. And this is, this is the thing that you were talking about, Sophia, when it comes to, like, okay, this is the thing that's going to drive me up the wall, is saying, like, no, but you should be moving. I should be able to move you, like, but it's not. And I can't, like, you know, I'm being led away in chains, being like, no, but the model should be rendering as two different objects, and it's not. And it's just like, okay, okay, sir. Just need you to calm down. Just need you to calm down. It's like, no, you don't understand. My video game doesn't work the way it should. Like, silly, silly stuff. Uh, yeah, no, I've, I have checked the entire, like, orientation of it. And I mean, I guess I'll just have to, like, cut through this way. But I was kind of hoping to get, like, a single big piece off of it. It's like, see, now this this is now moving. Like, for some reason, now this is fine. So I guess it must have been attached to, like, the wall somehow. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, da, 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 but we're just going to send it over there. Once it's clear of the ship, we're going to give it a good boop. Yeah, there's, there's some weird, like, objects floating in space type errors in this game. Which, I mean, it's a very ambitious game insofar as rendering different shapes. So I can kind of see that if it was going to trip itself up somewhere, that's where it would trip itself up. Um, but at the same time, it's like, that doesn't make my experience any less frustrating. Um, so I hope that it gets refined in future updates. Uh, soft crate, chairs, soft crate, and more chairs, more chairs. Like, this will basically be my life for the next 30 to 45 minutes once I go off screen. So you can see why it's like, okay, cool, really exciting, satisfying welding, and now all of the excitement of being someone who works for a moving company. Hooray! Like, so yeah, I mean, not the best note to maybe end on, but I mean, it's still, there's a reason why I've been playing this game for two streams now. Um, because it is overall a very fun game. It just needs some refinement, I think. Um, 
And I think that the last thing that I will do before I will help do our sign off is put my first of 23 computer terminals down into the barge. So I will say with that, that will begin to early access is early. Exactly. Um, so I will say um, we're going to shut down for today and let's see who is over here streaming right now if anyone i think i'm a little bit early for anyone who's actually actually you know what you know what we'll do is we will send you over to hang out with uh black girl gamers who are playing some among us which i haven't dug into yet but seems like a lot of fun um, but yeah, so I hope that everybody who came by the stream today had a good time hanging out, talking some game design, talking some various different things that are going on in the world. Um, and yeah, just generally, I hope I added some good vibes to your Monday. Um, if you did enjoy it, please uh, hit that follow button. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at Dichotomous Prime, where I am talking lots of uh, social justice, game design, um, you know, things around accessibility, um, ADHD, depression, racial justice, all of that sort of good stuff. Um, and yeah, definitely hang out, drop by, and um, yeah, so hopefully... Um, mental spoons willing i will be back on friday with uh we'll see if they do a new update but if not we might do something else who knows uh for now let me hit that good old raid function and is that one that's actually gonna do it correctly you hotter. Oh, I cannot. Re oh, you know what? That's actually probably valid that they who have the raid function off for that because I can imagine some questionable characters running through there sometimes. And there's a lot, or are there just folks who are not on? It's all very confusing right now. Um, but yeah, so. I actually don't know who's around right now then. I have been uh, duped, as they say. Um, so yeah, I mean, I suppose I'll just leave you to your own devices. So everyone behave, I guess, until uh, I see you on Friday. So have a lovely week and we will uh, rendezvous at the end of it and hopefully have some more good time with games. So have a good night, everyone.